welcome to everybody. This is a hybrid meeting of Fiscal Planning, Finance, and Building Committee. Um, it's on Thursday, September the 7th, 2023. This is the open session, so we will leave the door open. And uh, thank everyone for joining us here in person and online. And we'll begin with a call to order of the meeting. Item two is a motion to convene into closed session. Uh, Trustee Joe Hall, will you move us? Trustee Davies, will you second that? Thank you all in favor for that move. And item three is to rise and report from the closed session. Uh, the following items were received as information in closed session. 6.1 was the Britannia Farm Report, and item 6.3 was the Procurement Activity Report. Item 6.2 was the report on the artificial surface track and field at Corsair Public School and Camilla Road Senior Public School in Mississauga. Item 6.2 was recommended for our approval. Can we move that, Trustee McDonald? And second, Trustee Vermoli. All in favor? Thank you. Now we'll have acknowledgement of traditional lands, please. Since European contact, this land continues to be home to Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples. As responsible community members, we value the diversity, dignity, and worth of all people. Colonialism displaced and dispossessed Indigenous peoples of their ancestral land. And continues to deny their basic human rights, dignities, and freedoms. We are committed to learning true history to reconcile, make reparations, and fulfill our treaty obligations to the original peoples and our collective responsibilities to the land, water, animals, and each other for future generations. Thank you. Uh, item five is the approval of the agenda that we have in front of us. Can we approve that? A motion to move that. Thank you, Trustee Bailey. Trustee Primoli seconded. Thank you. Uh, any declarations? Item six, any declarations of conflict of interest? Seeing that, we'll move to item seven, which is approval of minutes. As item 7.1 is the budget development a committee meeting of May 23rd. Trustee McDonald, will you put that on the floor? Thank you. Trustee Joe Hall, will you second it? This is here for our approval. Uh, are there any questions? All in favor? Carried. Item 7.2 is the approval of the minutes from the Budget Development Committee meeting a week later. And this is here also for our approval. Our, we'll move it to the floor, Trustee Davies. Trustee Bailey, second. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions about that meeting minutes? Seeing none. All in favor? Carried. Item 7.3 is the Fiscal Planning, Finance, and Building Committee meeting minutes of June 1st, 2023. Also here for our approval. We'll move that to the floor, Trustee Joe Hall. Trustee from only second. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions about that meeting minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Carried. Thank you. There are no delegations. Uh, item 9, our staff reports. Item 9.1 is the application status update here for our information, for us to receive this information, and the presentation by uh, Zach Tesaro. Zach Tesaro. Tesaro. It's Tesaro. Tesaro. I've got to write one of those three. Zach is a development planner. Uh, go ahead, Zach, with the application status update, please. Through you, Chair, this report is for information and includes a list of development applications reviewed by staff for the months of May, June, and July of 2023, with a location map and a letter sent to the respective municipality. With respect to the listed applications, the anticipated number of students that will be generated were either included in previous projections and sufficient school accommodation is in place or will be provided by new schools approved by the board's annual planning document. Student yields are the number of students per dwelling unit. Planning calculates yields based on different housing types. These are detached homes, townhouses, and apartment units. Yields are ca calculated by dividing the number of students residing in housing type by the number of housing units. Student yields are calculated for different areas of the board. For example, Calden will have a different apartment yield than square one in Mississauga. When a development application is re received by planning, the location and type of housing is reviewed then the appropriate student yield for the areas applied to the development. 
For example, when planning receives a proposed condominium building in square one, the existing student yield for condominium, condominium buildings in the square one area is used to project the number of students that will be generated by the proposed development. Student yields are reviewed annually by staff and adjustments are made based on historical trends, housing and enrollment data. I am now open to take any questions you may have. Thank you. And thank you for that additional layer of information around how cal the calculations are made. Um, so this is here for our information to receive. Um, let's put it on the floor. Trustee Pramoli, Trustee McDonald, will second that. Thank you. Um, are there any questions for Zach about the status update report? That was helpful. Also, there is a question, Trustee Bailey. Through your chair and hoping that this question can be um, given an answer to. So when I was looking at the um, applications to, um, and it mentions the school enrollment in the school capacities, um, schools like Castlebrook and Chinkuzi, they're well in excess of their capacity. So how is that going to be handled and how are they doing it? Um, for that particular school, I don't have um, a particular. Oh, sorry, through your chair. For that particular school, I don't have a particular answer for you. I know that uh, we assess it in the enrollment and development uh, department. Uh, we can use portables or other means to ensure that the the capacity is met. Um, definitely, I can get back to you on that one if you require. That'd be helpful. That'd be helpful. Um. Oh, one, one more question. Go ahead. Um, I don't know who would answer this question. Um, so when we're looking over in like Ward 8 of Brampton, I believe there's only one high school along with Chinkuzi. So Castlebrook is not really in the ward. And then we have Chinkuzi. I think there's not another high school over there. So. Uh, through you, Chair. Um, again, for that, answer um i'm not going to be able to provide you with a specific answer today it might be due with um not having enough development to justify another high school um definitely we can um contact me later and i can give you a sufficient answer associate yeah. director gill might be able to add something here yeah. so, so through you uh jake and, and just be very, i believe there is a proposed to in the future in that area I, I, I can confirm that, but I believe there is. And, and this is all uh, based on the development information we have at the time. Uh, so as the development information changes, I mean, the developers do change their plans sometime to time of the years. So every year, the, our planning staff then try to change our plans based on, on the information we have. Uh, so based on that, I, I believe there's one, one uh, secondary school proposed by Parliament at the day. Thank you. I just want to say thank you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yes, Trustee Promoli. Question. All right. Thank you so much, Chair. Um, so I'm I'm just taking a quick look, and um, it's amazing to see so much uh, additional anticipated growth because I you know we're all, all excited to get more students, and we all want to see uh, a lot of students choosing to come to Peel schools because our schools are great. Um, so when I when I look at some of these, I do see a significant number of additional expected students uh, at some of these schools, mm -hmm. and um, and actually when I see El Dorado Public School, is this is this a new school? Or we're or we're adding 781 students, or sorry, 721 students to El Dorado Public School. Uh, so to you, um, uh, Chair Cameron, and, and uh, we what we are indicating when we say indicate the school, all we are doing is listing the school that is in that area. Right. So they probably. But, be... but we will be most likely proposing a new school to accommodate the seven hundred and twenty minutes. Okay. Or it, it may only be in our plans in there, but what you have in there is just a list of the existing schools in that area. That makes sense. But there's no way. I mean, Colorado is, I believe, around ten years old school. But, but there's no way we can accommodate seven and twelve. So there definitely has to be a new school. In there. We would require, yeah, we would require three things. Sorry, three chair. We would require something additional to yes. service that anticipated number, given the significant development coming into that neighborhood. So, um, also seeing some of these schools, we would be expecting potentially um, to be one in two hundred students added to schools. Would those be places where 
we would be anticipating potentially additions in some of these schools, or we'll be looking more at affordables for some of those. Okay. So, through you, uh, Chair Cameron, what planning staff does is each year they, they continue to collect this information, and, and there's a document called annual planning document mm -hmm. that is produced each year. Mm -hmm. And, and, and in that planning document, based on all the development applications, uh, there will be recommendations for any additional new school. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be recommendations for any additions where we don't have the space for new school, but we will be proposing new additions. Mm -hmm. And there could be uh, some boundary changes where we have space at some other schools, and, and based on the boundary growth, we may propose some boundary changes. So, so there are those recommendations. Each year, those recommendations are included in the document. And, and we will do that again for, for this period based on our information that we have received for it. Very helpful. Thank you. Uh, one more question for you, Chair. Um, in schools where there would be the potential for looking at additions or where we recognize that we'd be relying more on uh, additional portables or where we would be looking to build a new school, would it be possible for us to explore uh, the cost benefit analysis on air conditioning given the increasing heat that we are facing right now and I think we've all probably had a lot of calls this week um, in our in our schools and I know this is a problem we're dealing with in the spring into the summer months also when we have those opportunities can we take a look at what it looks like when we have um, new builds or additions and then can we also look at what that might look like in schools that are also already existing yes so through so you and uh, Jake I'm mean, definitely uh, for the new schools, we, we do explore that possibility to see if that's possible. Uh, and if we can build a new school uh, within the funding that, that we see from the ministry. And same with additions. So we do explore those possibilities. So what else other improvements we can include uh, within that, uh, with, with, uh, with the addition. And uh, so definitely that those things are all included. I mean, uh, explored at that point. I follow in the near the existing schools. Uh, there are many restrictions. Some schools, they just simply just there's no way physically impossible to include the conditioning in there. And in, uh, in other places, it's simply just too expensive for us. And the ministry does not provide any additional funding to, to include uh, the AC in our, in our existing buildings. So, so what we have done over the years is, is that uh, uh, knowing that, that there are certain days in the year where it is, it is quite hot, so we, uh, we have made sure that each of our schools and what we call that as a bit of a center, is it a library or there, which is which has a cooling center. So we kind of rotate the, the classrooms in that area. So there's some relief to, to all, all the students. Are there. Yeah. We, we have looked at all those possibilities, but as far as adding an AC uh, option to me to an existing school, mainly by two reasons, it's just not possible. And the schools were there, there, there is no space in the, in the, in the, in the, to include the, 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 for, for the AC. And other times, it's just very expensive. It's not uh, that physical or financially possible for us to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just want to say thank you, Zach, uh, uh, again, for the extra layer of explanation about how calculations are made. Because anyone might look at um, the report and say, well, in, in Brampton, there, there's a development of 4,697 apartments, and we're only going to get 220 high school students out of that. It's a, it is a confusing number to look at, just numbers alone, um, without understanding how uh, you have to do that projection through a formula that you have. So thank you for adding that. And I would just suggest for trustees, if you want to know that further, you should make connection with SAC for a discussion about how that all works specific to your area. Trustee Joe Hall, question? Hi, uh, yes. I have seen in the report that uh, James Creek uh, Public School is shown uh, uh, under my name. And I think this is a school far, far away from my constituency. There are other public schools close by this um, location for some to Castle World. Can you, can you just check, double check about this school? It is on the Bramley and maybe. Uh, through you, Chair, uh, do you mind giving me the address or the code for the development, please? Uh, 
Hang on just one second. Associate Director Gill, my dad, to that. Uh, the reason I think is, is uh, the trustee Charles name is mentioned because the development location is is four seven eight four Casson So the development location is this is part of your. It's oh, your okay. It's just at this point the students from that area uh, are are being directed to James Creek or Humberby. Okay. But but the development is within your area. Constituency. So that's why it's your name is mentioned. Okay. Right, so it's based on where the development is as opposed to what the schools are. Plus, uh, Trustee Kilhall, you and I share Humber View. Yes, so it is still in risk. Yeah, but, but this was confusing me. I was just checking my desk. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, thank, okay. you so much. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. I think we're done. Um, do we move and second this yet? Let's do it. Move, uh, Trustee Kilhall, second, Trustee McDonald, all in favor. Thank you. Um, item 9.2 is a procurement activity report here for our information. A presentation by Wendy Dobson, uh, Acting Controller of Corporate uh, Support Services. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you and good evening. Through you, Chair, in your uh, package this evening, you will find the procurement activity report for the period of May 1st, 2023 to July 31st, 2023. Within that report on page two, you will also find the highlighted awarded contracts during that period uh, of time. And I'm happy to take any questions regarding this report. Thank you. Let's move it to the floor. Trustee McDonald and Trustee Pramoli, uh, second it. Are there any questions about the procurement report? Seeing none, all in favor? Thank you. It's received for our information. Item 9.3 is a vandalism activity report. Also, for us to receive as information, also presentation by Wendy. Thank you. Thank you, and through you, Chair, uh, in this evening is uh, for information, the vandalism activity report for the period of April 2023 and May 2023. Uh, you will also find within that report uh, some highlights on page two of the report for each of the months. You will notice April was, was uh, significantly less um, incidents that occurred compared to May. Uh, one of the reasons for that is as we get into the warmer weather and near the end of the school year, the activity does tend to increase. At this time, I'm happy to take any questions regarding the report. Thank you. Okay, let's move it to the floor. Trustee Bailey, we move it. Trustee Davies, we second it. Thank you. Um, are there any questions? Yes, Trustee Davies. There's a lot of uh, not applicable I mean, is that because it's under 100 bucks or 200 bucks, or is that because of other reasons? Through you, Chair, uh, it is because of the, the fact that the cost was very, very low on any incident that we had. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Trustee Bailey. Through you, Chair. Um, how do you set a bunker on fire? Those things are made out of stone. Sorry, it's, it's just. For you, Chair, I'm just looking. I'm looking for it in the report here. Oh, uh, number thirty-six. Okay. It will provide me some more information. So, through you, Chair. Um, so there was an incident in front of the school. Uh, in the tennis courts. I think that's where it happened. Number 36 was Lincoln Alexander, correct? Correct. Yes. Um, the head custodian had noticed two incidents that had occurred where they may not have set the actual bunker on fire, but they had a fire burning at the bunker, uh, which may have caused some damage. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor of receiving this report? Carried. Item 10 is uh, communications, <coughs> trustee motions for consideration. I don't have any. Item 11 is trustee notices of motion, have not received any. And item 12 is for a move to adjourn. Trustee Fermoli, trustee McDonald, we second. All in favor? Carried. Thank you, everyone.